What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Shout out to the joiners. Shout out to the Point of View crew. And let's direct all of our prayers to anybody who's in the path of that vicious storm, Milton. Let's pray that the storm goes from a category 5 or 3 or whatever it is, just to a light wind. And let's pray that there are zero casualties and limited property damage. All prayers for people in Florida, homeboy, and those affected by Milton. So trip out on this. Today's video is Inland Empire Skinheads. Now, IE, or Inland Empire, is not a town or a city. It's a collection of towns and cities. The Inland Empire is very big. It has two counties, Riverside and San Bernardino. I've met far more people from Riverside than I have from San Bernardino, but the most solid wood I've ever met doing time is from San Bernardino, so there's that. I have met tons of skinheads from IE, especially Riverside County, oh boy. And now I was doing time when the big skinhead explosion happened. I saw it with my own eyes. And the reason for it was they slammed in a lower, homeboy. Whenever they slammed the lowriders, it created a vacuum. Because how they look at it, they say that the brand has the back, the hole. So you got the brand has the back and NLR had the front. But when they slammed NLR and they can no longer have the front, who's going to have the front? So then it became the brand has the back and the skinheads have the front. And eventually it was peanut has the front. They were the bell that rang the loudest. Such as kick it off like this, three different stories about three different Inland Empire skinheads. Trip on this. The first story is about this dude named Weasel. Little Weasel, which sounds even worse. I do not like the nickname Weasel. And I've met a few. I'm sorry, but it sounds like an insult, homie. And every time I go to make fun of somebody's nickname... There's already so there's always someone right there ready to say, hey, you know your name's Splinter, right? Mm, that's obviously not the coolest, most fanciest nickname out there. Be that as a man, homeboy. Still, I'm gonna voice my opinion and say I don't like the name Weasel. So I meet this dude, Weasel. In fact, he was the first dude I met when I touched down at McFarland CCF, level two. There's the first main line I went to. Get out of R&R. &R, you go to the patio. We still had tobacco. You're smoking. You know, join the fresh air. And Weasel was the first dude I met because he was very loud. Very loud and obnoxious. The center of attention. And I avoid people like that. I don't like the loud and obnoxious. I, I already learned to avoid them because I'll get you caught up. Nine times out of ten. I had made friends in county jail with this dude that was loud and obnoxious and the center of attention and just annoying. Nevertheless, I ended up road dogging around with this dude. His name was Leonardo because he, he said he looked like Leonardo DiCaprio. So he gave his, his own name, Leonardo, homie, and ran with it. But this dude, I can tell he was going to get me caught up. I start feeding him with a long spoon. I start separating myself from him. And he went behind my back and told everybody I didn't know how to roll cigarettes. It's making fun of me. Splinter don't even know how to roll cigarettes. Then I ended up playing a, a little basketball game with them. It was Horace or 21, some little simple game. We were playing for push-ups. And I missed a shot, had to do a push-up. And he came up behind me and was like, you know, trying to like grind on me. I mean, I couldn't feel him. Obviously, there was a gap this far between us. But he was up and down the room, push-ups. He's behind me, making fun of me, doing whatever. And the homeboys... They're on the patio, Barrack 16, are the one that said, dude, he's clowning you every time you go down for a push-up. We end up going into 16, getting him up. But dude, I don't like the loud and obnoxious, like this dude Weasel was. They put themselves on blast. They want to be the center of attention. They got all the jokes. They got all the opinions. They're all up in the politics. They just make themselves known. I, I, I'm more like the type of Stilo that you're, you're tucked in the cut. You know, you have one mouth and two ears for a reason. You're listening, you're watching, you're peeping game, but you're not just talking blah, 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 like that weasel dude did. But I can say this about him. He had my back, had my back to the fullest against the Southsiders. 
because it almost kicked off an issue between me and the Southsiders. Something that followed me from Waska Reception. Because when I was in Waska Reception, there was a Southsider named Termite. And I made the comment that termites eat wood. And he got heated over that, man. He, he really got hot and bothered when I said, hey, termites eat wood. And he sat next to me. So he like rushed at me and people grabbed him and they're like, like holding him back. And I'm just like, what's up? This dude tripping on us. And this little comment, just, just clowning. Bro, he got all bent out of shape. Feathers all hella ruffled. They calmed him down. You know, they, they, they kept us apart. And, and it was an issue. Then I go to McFarland CCF, Central Valley they call it. And then he ends up there just about a month later, bro. And it was still a tense situation. Because when he saw me, he's like, oh, this dude again? And the way he said it, and I was like, I didn't say much, you know why? It was the worst possible time for him to come driving up and to see me because I had pierced my tongue with the nail out of a state boot. And what you use for jewelry in there is pin fillers. So I had a pin filler in my tongue after I had pierced it. But from chewing on in and this is getting old and I needed a new pin filler. So I told homeboy, give me a new one. I didn't know that the new pin filler he gave me was like quadruple the size. I mean, the original one was like this. Then he gives me one like the huge old pin filler, bro. And he forced it in. It stretched my tongue to the max. And now I'm just like, ugh. I can't eat. I can't talk. I'm slobbering out both sides of my mouth. Stand there at my bunk like, ah. And that's when termite comes driving up. Oh, not this fool. All right. What's up, all right? What's up? What's up, y'all? And then Weasel stepped up. He was only in our dorm because he was one of the porters that would deliver the soap and the toilet paper and this and that. So he came into our dorm, dropped off supplies, saw that there was a little bit of tension, a little bit of some grouping. He stepped up like, Splinter, what's up, bro? I was like, I don't, I don't know. This guy has come on me. Like, what's my What's my What's my I was like, this dude was tripping on me, bro. I don't know. It was supposed to be a dead issue. Let's see what he wants to do about it. But he's the first one out of all the woods that were standing around and seeing that was going on that got to my right side and had my back and was frontlining it and like, what's up? But another thing I thought was trippy about Weasel, bro, he's from Hemet. But he'd always make fun of and talk bad about Hemet. I couldn't figure that out about him. Most people are like me. I'm like, Bakersfield's the best town. I love Bakersfield. Love everything about it. Born and raised. People from Orange County are like, OC, full blast. People from Fresno are, you know, I love my town. And he's like, Hemet. Nothing but old people there. Nothing really goes on. This is an old, little old town. I'm like, dude, have some pride for your town. Then Weasel had a suicidal tendency tattoo on his hand right here, which I thought was a little bit odd for a skinhead to be having an ST tattoo. I understand the jump from one to the other because when the suicidal's got a green light on him for that dude that suicidal was tattooing on black guys in prison, which I don't know why people were so surprised because suicidal is a multi multi-racial gang, aren't they? I mean, look at Suicide Tennessee, the band, a white lead singer, Hispanic bass player, black guitar player. They're multi-racist, homeboy, and never pretended to be anything other than that. But nevertheless, suicidal boys would come in, run wood pile, before you know it, got them caught up. They got a green light on them, disbanded. And so now you have all these dudes that used to be suicidals that don't want to claim it anymore. There's a green light. Like, what are we going to do? Some of them became Nazi lowriders. Some of them became skinheads. And they just did different things. So I get the jump from suicide to skinhead. I just don't get keeping the tattoo around. And another thing about this weasel dude, even though it was a CCF, we had carpet, popcorn, and sodas on Friday, homeboy. It was just a chill, little relaxed spot. Weasel packed a piece. A filetto. A lot of people did there. And there was tons of them around because weapon stock is just so easy to get. The security is real lax. They don't even have real cops. It's like security guards. Only one CDC sergeant there for paperwork. Weasel carried a piece of them everywhere he went. And how I know that is because one time I'm out at the yard. They had a heavy bag. I'm hitting the heavy bag. Next to the heavy bag is a sit-up area. And they had... Incline sit-ups, incline, decline, whatever you want to call it, feet up in the air. I can't even do sit-ups on me. Feet up in the air, and you're coming way back. It is incline, I guess you could say. But whatever the case may be, 
Weasel had a piece in his pocket. And since he's hanging upside down doing these sit-ups, it fell out onto the ground. His banger did. Big old banger right there on the ground. So I snatched it up for him. Pick it up and I put it in my pocket. I'm like, dude, I got your piece. I fell out. I got it. He's like, all right, good looking out, brother. Then he finished his set. I tried to hand it to him. He's like, no, hold on. Hold on. I'm like, what? He goes, I'm going to hit a lap. And he, he walked a lap. And then he's over there doing pull-ups. He's doing other stuff. I'm kind of like following him around. Like, dude, here. A relay, homeboy. Here's the baton. Let me hand this off. No, no, no. Just hold on, Spencer. Hold on. And I end up carrying that thing the whole yard. But I learned my lesson to you because way later on in life, Wasco A Yard, same situation. This time he was a skinhead from Orange County doing the exact same sit-ups. Feet up in the air, incline, whatever you want to call it, and his piece falls out on the ground. Just like with Weasel. But this time instead of picking it up, I stepped on it, I put my foot on it. I'm like, don't trip, bro, I got it. I got it for you. Then when he got done doing his sit-ups, he stood up, and I moved my foot, and he picked it up. No longer will I pick up someone's piece and put it in my pocket. Because homeboy, good luck giving it back. They'll try to use you to carry it. And I have different stories about stuff like that happening in the county jail. One time this dude wanted me to hold his syringe. I held it, and then finally I sold it. Sold it for a joint. He came later, he's like, hey, where's my, my binky? I was like, I sold it. Why, why? Well, why'd you leave it with me? I didn't want it. I told you to take it back, sold that thing. And bro, that's when we were like 18, 19 years old. All through my prison career, I kept seeing this dude. It was Rowdy. I sold Rowdy's binky, and he would always bring it up to me. That's cold blood, Splinter. You sold my binky, homeboy. But be that as it may, so this dude named Weasel, he's loud, he's off the hook. I kind of avoid him, feed him with a long spoon. He carries a piece, had my back against termite, all that. But then one day, he gets a package. Because back then, your family could send you packages. Now, you have to get a 30-pound package ordered, you pick the stuff out, and then walking horse or whatever will pick the stuff out. No, back in the day, your family can go grocery shopping, buy stuff, and put it in a box for you. And Weasel's family did that. But then they included some contraband. They put some weed, they put something in there, something illegal in that package. So when Weasel went to r and R to pick up his package, and the cop's looking at stuff, and he's handing stuff up for him to put in his bag, and there's something like some kind of soap or shampoo or some sort of thing, and he's looking at it, and he sets it up there. But before Weasel can grab it, the cop takes another look, and he sees something floating in it. He's like, whoa! And the cop goes to take it back, but Weasel grabbed it, opened it up, started dumping it out, was trying to get to the clavo, the contraband, he was going to try to swallow it, and then when the cop came up to him, bro, he knocked him out! And he went through all the packages, ripping it up, trying to destroy the contraband. And they arrested him, and they put him in the hole, and they charged him for assault on a CO, homie. Snarf, snarf. That carries a lot of weight as far as extra time you're going to get. I believe it's an A1 offense. You're going to go to Kern County for a DA referral. Bro, we can figure out why he went full blast like that. Years later, I seen Weasel in DR, Wasco Reception. I asked him, dude, hey, what's up, man? How, you know, hey, Splinter, dude, ain't no time to see... I said, bro, why did you take off on the cop? He said, because my people sent that to me. I don't want them to get in trouble. They sent it under their own name with their address, and it would have fell on them, homie. I didn't care that I picked up a deer referral. I didn't care about none of that. I was trying to protect my people. And I could do nothing but respect it, homeboy. So next story, trip on this. I'm in Kern County Jail pre-trial, APOD. Now, APOD is supposed to be medical, and I've been to APOD a grip of times. I never see anybody medical. I just see all the homeboys, and it's just a run of the milling convicts like D Pod, H Pod, and everything else. I don't know why they call it medical, homeboy. I think maybe once I seen a guy there in a wheelchair. So I'm there, and there's a skinhead named Bull from Inland Empire, IE. And he does not like Bakersfield boys. He doesn't he doesn't like woods. He's like set trips on us. In our own county jail. That dude would do burpees all day long. I mean, he was hella fit. And he'd always say, man, I can't get no one to work out with me. And any dudes from Bakers could hang. Because I, I, I wish I had an IE homeboy here that could, I could actually have a workout partner. And then he would talk smack. Be like, there would be no Bakersfield if it weren't for IE. Because how it's spelled. Bakersfield. F-I-E-L-D. Yeah, there'd be no Bakersfield if it weren't for IE. He's like, man, none of you guys could hang with me on the workout. And he just kicked it to himself. He did burpees all day, talked smack, and no one could hang, and he would draw. He was an excellent artist. 
usually when people draw, they sell their art. Or people will come up and request, like, hey, it's my old lady's birthday, can you make a card? He wouldn't do none of that. He wouldn't take requests. He wasn't making cards for people. And if he drew something that was awesome, and you go, dude, I really like that. I'd like to bite off you. Nah, nah, I got something I want to do with it. So he wouldn't ever bless anybody with none of his artwork. Wouldn't sell it, wouldn't give it away. He was just a jerk, homie. Actually, it's like he didn't like Bakersfield. The home bush of Bakersfield. Didn't even like Pecker Woods. He was an IE skinhead in our county jail, straight up set tripping. But the craziest thing happened, he ended up getting a homeboy. An IE Peckerwood, right next door. I believe we were A3. This dude drove up A4. His name was Stash. I guess the reason why they call him Stash because he had a real weird mustache. So his nickname was Mustache. Short the stash. I guess it went all the way across like this. I don't know. I never seen him. Some people seen him at court. But this dude from IE, this Peckerwood, shows up right next to us. But he's saying he's got a bunch of clavos up in him. He's got clavos in him, homeboy. I, he, he didn't hoop him, though. He swallowed him. Because I got all these packages. I got all kinds of stuff in me. And what do you start doing? He starts selling it. He was on deck. I got weed on deck. I got speed. I, got, I just have to be able to shit it out later, but I got it. And people are putting money on his books. They're giving him store and anticipation of the next couple of days, him pooping it out, homie. They thought it's there for sure. It's in him. We're going to have it. We're going to be able to get to it. It's going to go fast. Once he does finally get it out. So people are trying to buy off him. But then after a whole week, bro, a whole week went by and he still didn't produce anything. Nothing ended up coming out. People start tripping on him. And then they decide they're just going to go ahead and beat him, bro. Get rid of him. Roll him up and smash him. They think he's lying. They think he stole everybody's money. So out of respect for Bull, since he's from Inland Empire and this dude Stash is from IE, they shot him a kite like, Bull, we're going to remove this fool. Let you know out of respect, we're going to smash him. And he's like, no, let me do it. Let me do it. I'll hit him with the razor. Give me action at him. Which you could do through the law library. You put a sip in to go to the law library. They take everybody out. Whoop, you're there. Only one cop is present. Dude, you can handle all kind of business. I've seen it happen time and time again. So Bull said, let me get that fool. I want action at him. I'll get him at the law library. So the day came. They set it up. Bull went by himself out of our pod. That dude Stash went with the wood that was in his building who had the keys to the whole thing to watch. He went with them to be a spectator, I guess, to make sure Bull did it right. Make sure there wasn't no funny business. So they go to a law library, but the thing is, Stash and Bull turn around and start beating the, the dog piss out of the key holder, the wood from Bakersfield, who went with Stash to make sure the bull got him correctly. Is this them three white dudes, some other blacks, a lot of people at the law library? Just those three, though, involved in the whole situation with Stash having these clavos still up in them, supposedly. They want to get his ass, bro. Bull's supposed to slice him at the law library, but instead, Bull and Stash turn and start smashing the key holder from Bakersfield at Peckwood. I apologize. Can't remember his name. They smashed that fool. They ended up sending that key holder right back to us, to our building. He got jumped. He's like, dude, they jumped me. So he's, I couldn't believe it. I'm thinking Bull's going to pull out his piece and start getting this fool. Instead, they rushed, it, rushed me and smashed me, bro. And then they sent Bull and Stash to Depod. We're trip on this. Stash ends up producing the clavos. And now it's been like 10 days. They're over there D-Pod, we're shooting kites, like they did a bunch of funny business, and we're getting kites back, like no, actually Stash came out of the clavos. He has them. So what we start thinking happened, the Stash came and sold everything, made all this money, promised to give all of it away, and then got it out and put it right back up. Like, oh, I can't get it, I can't get to it. And just planned on going to another part of the prison. It was just a scantless, bro, a whole scantless scenario that they dreamt up. And of course, we're shooting kites to D-Pod, like, they did us dirty over here, they have our money, need to get some of those clavos and send them this way. But the people in D-Pod are like, Charlie Holmes, we want it for us. We're not sending nothing to you guys. Bro, it gets dirty up in there, homeboy. Next, trip on this. Another skinhead from IE, from Riverside, this dude is from RSSH. Love this dude, homeboy, Vern. When I was my first term in McFarland CCF, I had two road dogs, Vern 
and Matt from OC. That's who I kicked it with. Matt was my pinochle partner, and Burn was my workout partner. Oh boy, I loved them both. But Burn hated Matt. Couldn't stand him, dude. Could not stand him. He's like, Splinter, as soon as you leave, I'm smashing him, bro. I was like, I wish you wouldn't. Why can't you guys have peace? I don't know what it was that hate each other. But Vern had enough respect for me. He waited for me to parole. The day I left, dude, he rushed Matt in the TV room and beat his ass. Then later on, I ended up seeing Vern at Wasco Reception. But he's on Wasco A-Yard, mainline. He got sent there for smashing Matt. A bunch of points. He goes to A-Yard. I'm in reception, but I'm working retherm. They're sending some of us over from the reception side to work in the retherm. And we're around mainliners and A-Yard. But they're not showing no love, bro. They're, they're all about the money. Unless you can give them money or stamps, they're not going to do nothing for you. Even the homeboys, I see homeboys from Bakersfield, I'm like, show love, dude. Like, do a mail out. Bring us 100 stamps. They weren't doing nothing. But Burn showed me love. A skinhead from IE, RSSH, would give me clavos of tobacco, homeboy. Then he almost got in trouble with his comrades. Because what it was is the skinheads had a big kitty of tobacco to touch, touch the dudes and reception side. And they found out that Vern gave it to me, a wood. They're like, dude, Vern, what's up, homie? Those are supposed to go to the comrades. He's like, Splinter is my comrade. So good dude. I freaking love Vern, man. But he ended up getting killed by Nazi lowrider, dude. When Vern got out, he was posted up at his pad. Dude came over, boom, one shot, and murked him, dog. Sad. Rest in peace to Vern. A good dude. But the crazy part about that is years later, I'm in New Delano. I'm in the gym. At Kern Valley, it's a level 4, 180, but I'm in the level 3 gym. And I end up meeting this dude, the skinhead from RSSH. And I ask him, did you know Vern? He goes, yeah, I knew him. I said, man, I did time with them. My first term at Central Valley, and I was with him at Wasco. Good dude. Saw a dude. I love him, man. And his comrade was like, yes, man, great dude. We hated losing him. I've known him since school. Whoop, whoop, and cha, cha, cha. But the craziest thing happened, because the dude who shot Vern... End up showing up. The level 4 180 side. We're in the level 3 gym. But we get he gets word that the dude who actually shot Vern is there with us. And when he told me that, he's like, dude, the dude who got Vern is here with us. I thought his neck, next words were going to be, and I'm going to get him. I can't wait to get him. Or run back from a homeboy. Spill my homeboy's blood. It's on. You take his win. It's on. But instead, he wasn't saying that. He wasn't acting all high power, acting tough, saying he's going to get a run back. Actually, he was nervous. He's like, dude, he's here. Like, man, I wonder if he's going to be tripping on me. I'm like, dude, you should be tripping on him. He took out your homeboy. You're worried about him not liking you? But I kind of understood because this dude is a lifer. Level 4, 180, he got nothing to lose. The skin that I was with in the gym with, short time, and it'd be a couple months, maybe a year. He probably didn't want to do that knife play. He probably didn't want to go all the way there. But he was nervous, dude. I couldn't believe it. He was more scared of what that dude would do to him than than sitting there plotting and trying to come up with something to do to him. I had to just walk away. I didn't know what to say. When you start talking all that negativity and all the talking about that I'm scared type shit, homie. Miss me with that. I don't want to hear about how you're fearful. I want to hear about how you're going to go handle it. With that being said, I'm going to cut the string and let it fly. Peace.